So in van der Waals, at any one time, the electrons that are around this atom, say for example helium, they could be anywhere on that atom. So for the atom to be have a neutral charge on it, they're evenly spaced out. So there's one at the top and one at the bottom of the atom. Now, if they were both all on this side, on the right-hand side, that side would have all of the electrons, all the negative charge from that atom. So that side would be delta negative, and the other side would be delta positive. Now, what that could do is if that was near an atom, such as this one over here, so this one over here, if it was near this atom, what we could do is it would push these electrons, it would move them to the opposite side of the atom, because the electrons repel each other, and that atom would end up looking like that. And it would leave a slightly positive charge on that side. So what you'd end up with is you'd end up with all of the electrons from atom 1 on the right hand side form a delta negative, and then all of the electrons from atom 2 be pushed to the right hand side as well because they'd be repelled causing a delta positive there and what that means is that positive and negative they would then attract each other so this here would cause an attraction between the two now you can tell just by looking that it's all to do with the numbers of electrons in this case we've got two so it's quite a weak interaction so we know that helium has got weak van der Waals so it only has a weak van der Waals interactions, which means that it's not held strongly together, so that's why it's a gas. And if we take fluorine and chlorine as an example, you can see that fluorine over here has only got nine electrons. Now, with its nine electrons, it can only form a, quite a weak van der Waals interaction, and fluorine is a gas that disperses very easily. Now, chlorine has got eight extra electrons. So it can form stronger van der Waals because when all those electrons move to one side, like we can see over here, all the electrons have moved to the right-hand side of the atom. So what that means is that the delta negative on each on fluorine is a lot less than the delta negative on chlorine because the chlorine has got more electrons, so there's more negative charge over there. So what it's actually got is a delta negative that is much greater or much stronger than the delta negative on fluorine. Now, if you keep going down the group, so you have group 7, and you go down it, you start from the top with gases, and then as the van der Waals increase, so the van der Waals increase as you go down, you go from a gas to bromine, which is a liquid, and then as we get past bromine, you get to iodine, and you get to astatine, which are solids. And we can use that to prove that van der Waals is increasing. Because we're starting off as a gas, so the van der Waals is quite weak. There's not many electrons. And then as we get lower and lower down the group, we get to the liquids with a stronger van der Waals because there's more electrons. And then we get even more electrons down at iodine and astatine. The delta negatives are really, really strong. So we've got a much stronger van der Waals interaction. But overall, van der Waals is still the weakest of all the intermolecular interactions because it's only due to this movement of electrons. And these electrons on the atoms are constantly moving. So we're talking millions and billions of a second that these interactions happen for because the electrons are constantly moving. There's only a really brief moment where they're all going to be in this position where they're all on one side causing the delta negative. Okay?